I've made a few mistakes. In January, I moved to an island with bright ideas and big dreams of travel. I expected to learn a lot about life. I was leaving home for the first time, leaving my family and friends behind. But I wasn't prepared for what was about to be thrown at me. Remember Rusty? I bought Rusty under the panic of everybody looking for cars when we arrived. The seller promised me the world, fixing some critical things, licensing it, that he had some attachable windows that he could give me, that I could air condition the car for about $300. Air conditioning? Seriously? The car has gaping holes in it. I overpaid, I had to beg and plead for it to be fixed, I had to pay for the licensing, and now I have a car that pours water on me when I drive to work. I then thought I'd replace that mistake with the Japanese car from B Forward. I'd import it at a reasonable cost and sell it for a profit. I did my research, I agonized over it for weeks, and I finally pulled the trigger. So remember Cooper? It arrived with a damaged hatch. The criminals at B Forward had failed to disclose it, but if you look super closely at the pictures, you can see that it's damaged. I was angry, but it wasn't the end of the world. I tried to stay positive and made this video celebrating the car. But the car was making a strange noise. I took it into four mechanics, each charging me for their time, to eventually find out that there was something wrong with the differential. The differential is something which is connected to the transmission and it's so closely connected that you have to replace the entire transmission to fix it, costing thousands of dollars. Thousands! Then I get back from Cuba and the roof is sagging like a wet nappy. Absolute disaster car. The disgusting criminals at B Ford claim there was nothing wrong with the car when it left. Now I'm no car expert, but come on. I now have to sell this car for a third of what I paid for it. Do not touch B Ford with a 10 foot pole. At the same time that all of this is happening, my dream island job goes from 11 hours a day to 18 hours a day. Instead of being thanked for giving good service to the client who is happy, I get shouted at for charging too much time. On top of all those exciting things, I had decided before the car disaster to buy an expensive camera, something I had been saving up for and dreaming about for years. I would also committed finances to three big holidays. It was all planned out, it was all calculated. So when the car disaster happened, I went from being financially secure to having zero savings and scraping by each month. To add to the fun, two weeks ago I signed a letter that will release me from my auditing prison. But that leaves me in search of a job. I have no idea where I'm going to be a month from now. Will I be here on the island with a better job, better career fulfillment? Will I go home and start again? Will I be some other place in the world? At this stage, anything is possible. I'm sharing all of this because I want it to be recorded. I want to remember hitting what feels like rock bottom. And I want to remember that even through all of that, I made great friends, I was blessed with two amazing roommates, I've gotten to see New York, Grand Cayman, Cuba, and soon LA. I want to remember that when everything seems to be crumbling around you, joy can still be found, God still provides, great memories can still be made, and lessons can still be learned. Keep strong people, this roller coaster is just getting warmed up. You're welcome. <laughs>